wait, how did such a small amount of water break such a large barrel? Hydrostatic paradox. How did Pascal break a barrel with a mug of water? In 1648, Blaise Pascal set up an experiment in which he tore a barrel with a mug of water. He attached a thin, high tube to a barrel filled with liquid and began pouring liquid through it. Due to the small diameter of the tube, the height of the liquid column rose rapidly, while the pressure also increased. As is known, the pressure value depends on the height of the liquid column, the density of this liquid, and the value of the acceleration of gravity. The pressure in the barrel increased so much that the barrel could not withstand the stress and burst. If the diameter of the tube was larger and the height was smaller, then when filling it with the same volume of water, nothing would happen since it is the height of the liquid column that is crucial. We need to differentiate between the concept of hydrostatic pressure, the normal compression stress, and the pressure force of the liquid acting on the wall. The pressure force will be defined as the product of the hydrostatic pressure on the wall area. If we consider a barrel with a tube, then the hydrostatic pressure will be defined as the product of the height of the liquid column by the density of the liquid and the acceleration of gravity. To find out the force with which the liquid will press on the bottom of the barrel, you need to multiply the resulting value by the area of the bottom of the barrel. The essence of the hydrostatic paradox, or Pascal's paradox, is that the weight of the liquid poured into the vessel may differ from the pressure force exerted by it on the bottom of the vessel. So, in upward expanding vessels, the pressure force exerted on the bottom is less than the weight of the liquid, and in upward narrowing vessels, it is more. Since the pressure force is defined as the product of hydrostatic pressure on the bottom area. In fact, this phenomenon is explained by the common laws of physics, in particular, Pascal's law. If we make calculated dependencies for each vessel and consider them from the point of view of Pascal's law, there will be no discrepancies. However, for this phenomenon, the name the hydrostatic paradox has been retained.
Pascal's law states that, when pressure exerted anywhere, upon an enclosed liquid, is transmitted undiminished, in all directions, to the interior of the container. As per his principle, allows large forces to be generated with relatively little effort. As illustrated, a 5-pound force, exerted against a 1-inch square area creates an internal pressure of 5 pounds per square inch. This pressure, acting against the 10 square inch area develops 50 pounds of force. The hydraulic technology, has revolutionized the field of innovation. Present day hydraulic solutions are based upon this technique, using compressible fluids, like oil, water, to produce the kind of needed force. Let's understand, the hydraulic brake, which is used in car, lorries, and motorcycles. The braking systems of cars, working on Pascal's law. The hydraulic brake system, liquid, known as brake fluid, is used to transmit pressure, from the brake pedal to all the wheels of the vehicle. The hydraulic brakes allow equal pressure, to be transmitted throughout the liquid. When the brake pedal is pressed, the piston of the control cylinder applies a pressure, on the brake fluid. And this pressure is transmitted, via a system of pipes, to each cylinder at the wheels. The cylinder at the wheels, cause a pair of pistons, to push a pair of friction pads, to press against the surface of the brake discs, or brake drums. The frictional forces between these brake components cause the vehicle to slow down and stop. When the brake pedal is released, a spring restores the brake discs to their original positions. At the end of this lesson, we will able to learn the hydraulic drum brake system and hydraulic disc brake system. Also learn the Pascal law and how does hydraulic system work based on Pascal law.